Factorize, there's only one thing you have to do to factorize this, right? It's almost there. You just have to take out a factor of x here. I'm going to be really, really cheap and say if I take out a factor of x here and x here, then I'm going to slap out the front. Is that okay? Just in a hurry. Now, once you've done that, I've factorized. Okay, I'm up to this step, asymptotes. There are two categories of asymptotes that I'm interested in. Which is the easiest to work out? Generally, it's vertical. Uh, in this case, the horizontal one is also easy to determine, but it's not always. It's not always. Sometimes it's oblique, as you will see. Okay, the vertical is easy. Where is the vertical? At one. No. I get vertical asymptotes from discontinuities of the function, right? So x equals negative two. Oh, so I've got my axes here. I'm talking about y, but never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna start drawing. Okay, so negative two. Let's put him back here. Okay. There's a vertical asymptote. There is a horizontal asymptote here. What is it? It's y equals 1. Now, number 1, the reason I know it's horizontal is because I look at the degree of the numerator and denominator, and they're the same. Okay. So as x climbs off to infinity and negative infinity, they're, doing, they're growing at roughly the same rate. Um, there's no 2 or 3 or 4 or extra coefficient out the front, so that's why x squared over x squared will just be 1. So I'm going to try and do this with a reasonable sense of scale. Okay, so there's my horizontal asymptote. Symmetry, don't worry about it. Factorization, done. Asymptotes, done. Intercepts. <clears throat> I'm looking at the numerator, right? So I've got the origin, which means I've got the uh, y-intercept for free as well. And um, I've got x equals 4. If I'm saying that's x equals negative 2, then that would be x equals 2. And uh, that would be x equals 4, roughly. Okay. Okay, so far so good. So sorry, I should put a, a cross there, and that's 4, and that's 0. Done my intercepts. I didn't have to worry about my intercepts because I found them already. Regions. Okay, regions. Now you can do this um, again in a, in a quick way or in a slower way, right? Remember, the things that I'm using to get my regions are these factors up here. They're the factors, okay? But the reason why the factors are important is because they tell me where I'm positive and where I'm negative, okay? Now, x is a factor. x take away 4 is a factor. x plus 2 is a factor. And then x plus 2 is a factor again, okay? Now, I just want to point out for that last bit, right? If x plus 2 is a factor twice, think about what x plus 2 all squared, think about what it looks like. Think about what kind of factor line I would draw for that. And the answer is it's a parabola, right? <clears throat> it's not quite positive definite because it actually does hit the axis right there, okay? But everywhere else, it's positive. So what does it contribute to the changing the sign of the whole thing? Nothing. Answer, it doesn't change anything, right? Um, if I divide by a positive number, then whether this is positive or negative, its sign remains unchanged. So therefore, I'm going to ignore my x plus 2 squared. I don't need to cloud my diagram, which is already going to get busy enough, um, with these two extra lines which are superfluous and don't, don't give me any useful information. So these two are all the ones that I need. Okay, so uh, x is going to pass through there, and x minus 4 is going to pass through there. You okay with that? And just to help me draw my regions nicely, I'm going to put a vertical line through 4. So that I can shade properly, right? And now I'm ready to shade. I only have two factor lines that I need to worry about, even though I've got two extra ones, but they don't contribute anything. So two negatives gives me a positive. positive. So I'm up here. As I, sorry, uh, also here. Missed that. <clears throat> How do you know where to stop, sir? Yes, good. It, I stop where the factor lines change sign, oh. right? Because all the way up to here, and even, even I caught myself, right? Uh, easy thing to forget that asymptotes don't necessarily change yeah. the sign. Um, the axis doesn't necessarily change the sign, so I caught myself there. But you can see why I go all the way up to here, because at that point, now I transition. Yeah, I'm not two negatives anymore. I'm a positive and negative, which means negative. negative. Highlighters are really good for this, by the way. I just don't have highlighters that work on this board. And then I transition past four, and I have two positives, meaning above the axis. Positive. OK. Now, at this point, you actually could get a pretty good idea of where the graph goes. OK. But you have an extra piece of information from this guy over here, which gives you that, just that little bit more detail. I know there's a stationary point. OK. Where is the stationary point? 
It's at one, one minus a third. Now, does that fit with the picture that we've got already? Well, this is four, that's two, so one would be about there. And if I said that that's y equals one, then y equals negative a third would be, well, I don't know, something like that. <coughs> Uh, it's a bit it's further really than that. Right okay, now it's it's not as hard as it looks. Okay, now remember, remember, I found all the stationary points. This is one of the distinct advantages of having done calculus now. Okay, so knowing that I've got all the stationary points over here, what's happening to the left of the asymptote? Clearly, it has to do this. It has to do this. Now I know that I'm going to be coming from above the asymptote. Before I knew calculus, what I had to do was I had to like try and put in numbers to this. I had to put in like say x equals negative 10,000 or negative a million. And then I would notice this number and I actually went through this process with you. We got our calculators out and we'd say, oh look, it's like 1.00001. It's just above, okay? So I knew I was up here, okay? But now that we know calculus, we know like apart from this, the only other thing it could do is it could do that, right? It could come from below, but calculus excludes that possibility. Why? No stationary. Because there's no stationary point. I've found there's one and one only stationary point. So this can't possibly happen. Okay? So even though we could do this without calculus before, calculus kind of makes it more efficient and more precise. Okay? So that's what's happening on the left. Easy enough. Transition to what happens over here on the right. Um, have a look at this part over here. This part's easy enough. I know I'm going to be here. Okay? Like I said before, you don't need the second derivative to know this is going to be a local minimum, right? Like, how could it possibly be a local maximum? Just imagine if I tried to draw it as a max. It would do something like that, right? But hold on, then I've got to get back to this asymptote, right? Which would mean another turning point. But I, I can't do that because I found there's one and one only turning point. You, you see what I mean? So I didn't need to appeal to the second derivative to know that. What I knew from just regular curve sketching in the regions tells me this has to be a minimum. Okay, so it's going to go up and it's going to approach this asymptote. So here's how I draw it. I'm going to be pretty flat here and I'm going to go towards that asymptote. Okay, what else can it do? It can't approach the asymptote from the top because again, that would need another turning point. Okay. Uh, what happens here on the left of my turning point? Well, I've got to come up here towards this asymptote, right? In fact, that's all I have to do. Okay, so therefore, carefully, from this stationary point, I come up and then I approach. And of course, I can blow through that horizontal asymptote with no problems because the horizontal asymptote only tells me about extremities. the extremities, positive and negative infinity. So he doesn't care about what happens here. In fact, you can let y equal 1 and you can go ahead and solve this quadratic. I, I don't know what actual value you're going to get, but you'll, you'll get one.